Welcome to Megan's Minute. I'm your host, Megan Lavin, owner of the allergy-friendly recipe site, allergyawesomeness.com. And together with Allergic Living, we discuss topics for those living with food allergies or those who love them. Today, we're gonna to talk about how my son with multiple food allergies was able to attend his first sleepaway camp. The church congregation that I go to has a sleepaway camp for several days every summer called Young Men's Camp, and it's for male teens and tweens. And ever since my son was diagnosed with food allergies around one years old, I have been dreading this sleepaway camp. I couldn't fathom how it would be possible for him to eat anywhere Now I was not the chef. So let me tell you some things that we've done to build up for this, knowing it's coming. One thing we did in preparation was all growing up, we tested him yearly. And when any test results seemed to have gone down, we would do an oral challenge. Now, if this is a new term for you, Allergic Living has tons of information on oral challenges I recommend you look up after this video. And through this process, my son has been able to add several foods to his diet, including hazelnut, shrimp, oats, soy, eggs, and others. With every food he's gained, it has given me hope of less to worry about when he was going to be away from home. As of right now, he's down to just wheat, dairy, peanuts, and tree nuts, minus the hazelnut, of course. The second thing we did was to see if my son could even be around unsafe food, otherwise the point would be mute. Many allergy parents don't want allergens in the home or their child near of them. I get it, and to each their own. And I was like that at the first two, because it was so new and scary. We, however, talked with our allergist, and as he's gotten older, ruled out he was an airborne reactive. Then at home to test the waters with an epinephrine auto injector close at hand, we found my son could eat at the same table with family members eating his allergens. We're very careful and mindful to clean up any spills, and we actually have a whole separate video on how to even have multiple allergens in the home if you're interested in that. So all these things were not only helpful for sleepaway camp, but also for school. Talk to your own allergist about the way to handle allergens. And obviously this will vary greatly depending on the individual situation. And once we realized that my son could safely be around allergens, we knew the camp was finally possible. Long before summer this year, I found out what men from our congregation were going to be going to this young men's camp. I asked to host a sit down meeting where we discussed what food allergies are, kind of like a 101, how to recognize anaphylaxis and how to administer the epinephrine auto injectors. I passed around training auto injectors and let them practice. I wanted them to know upfront what the dangers were and to understand how serious it was before they even began planning. This gave me great peace of mind as they took it serious and asked lots of questions. Then when it came time to plan the mini, the leaders knew already that my son needed to be involved. My husband and son went to the planning meetings together because Teen boys don't always think of everything and they don't know how to cook anyways. <laughs> and they tried to pick meals that worked for him or could easily be adapted for my son. I am so grateful they were willing to do this and I recognize that we are fortunate to be involved. A big help was that my husband also attended the entire camp. He took off work and was there to spend time with my son as well as ensure that the cooking and the food prep went well. My son did have some anxiety about being alone to advocate and check things where he had never been away from home that long without his parents. So I'm really glad that my husband could be there. It is a sacrifice to you know use up that PTO, but it gave me lots of comfort and I trust my husband because he's very careful and very aware. Now, does that mean I still worry? Heck yes. My husband is one of those who can sleep in all day. So I worried like, oh, is he gonna sleep through breakfast and miss the breakfast prep and not be there to remind them to not put cheese on my son's stuff? But I had to have faith. I had to trust in him and my son. You grow when you're given chances. And I had to give not only them this opportunity to learn and grow, but I had to learn and grow just as much to deal with that uncomfortableness and that separation. I can't, nor should I always be there for my son when he gets older. We both have to learn to trust one another. And these are great times to practice that. And spoiler alert, my son had a great time. There were no accidents and I think he really felt grown up and normal to go away to a camp like this that everyone else in our congregation was going to. He would have been so left out. I'm so happy we did it and I really look forward to him doing it every year until he turns 18, even though it does mean some planning. The camp leaders were also super attentive and pretty much the only thing my son couldn't have during the meals was the cheese or the bread which are easy to sub in and out. They also always made sure to serve my son first, 
so that if others used cheese afterwards, we didn't have to worry about accidental food cross contact because I swear shredded cheese has legs of its own. For those who want the additional details, I'll go over uh, what my son ate for each meal. The camp leaders did ask that any substitutes I would buy and pack for him, we sent him with his own cooler and then they just reimbursed me. It was easy to do and that way I didn't have to worry that they accidentally bought the wrong item because labels can look so similar. Okay, here we go. You ready? It's, remember, men were planning these meals. Okay, Wednesday lunch was tacos, which consisted of cheese, beef, lettuce, corn, or hard shells. I emailed them to remind them that even seasonings can have wheat in them, so that way they'd use a safe seasoning for the ground meat. I knew my son uh, would know to only use the hard corn shells and to serve his first to avoid getting the aforementioned cheese in his. Wednesday's dinner was tinfoil dinners, which consisted of beef, carrots, potatoes, onions, and ketchup. No changes needed and he actually loved it. Thank goodness he's an adventurous eater. Thursday breakfast was breakfast burritos, which had egg, salsa, sausage, bacon, and cheese. I packed some mission gluten-free tortillas because those are safe and soft enough to roll up. And he also knew, of course, to not make his without cheese. Thursday lunch <clears throat> was hamburgers, chips, and fruit. I packed him his safe hamburger buns. He likes char and made sure that they knew some safe chips that he could have so they'd have them around like Lay's Barbecue, Fritos, or Lay's Original. Thursday dinner was Dutch oven. I love Dutch oven. A dinner with chicken, carrots, onions, and potatoes. Again, no substitutions needed. They kept things nice and simple. Friday was French toast. I sent his safe bread and some rice milk so him and my husband could make up their own batch. And I also sent our own cast iron skillet. I also sent safe butter, but you know, go figure. My son ended up not even using it. He's kind of crazy and only likes just syrup, whereas I slather mine in butter. Friday lunch was just sandwiches, apples, and granola bars. He already had safe bread from the French toast, so he used that. And then I sent up some safe granola bars. Easy peasy. Uh, Friday's dinner was French fries, hot dogs, chili, and vegetables. I sent his safe hot dog buns, which are Udi's. And unfortunately, see, it's real life the stores out of his safe chili at the stores but he was fine having the hot dogs and the fries and the vegetables and that filled them up and i had emailed the leaders to remind them not to put butter on the vegetables as many people do this unconsciously it's just a habit again why i'm so grateful my husband could be there and just be that extra set of eyes saturday breakfast was cereal oatmeal milk and muffins now my son already had his rice milk from the french toast and he can have cornflakes and rice krispies so um, unfortunately there weren't any safe store-bought muffins that my son actually likes, but I knew that he could get full on the cereal and the oatmeal packets, the safe ones that I packed. Plus they were just setting down camp and driving home so he could eat when he got home. I also sent um, a box of cream of rice since that only requires water as well. Not only if he wanted it for that breakfast, but at any time because he loves it and it's a great filler. He adores it. And even though it's something simple, it's something that he can make himself and it's shelf stable, which makes it easy to pack. I also made sure to do filler things, like I knew they'd be having s'mores at some point, so I packed safe Enjoy Life bars and shard graham crackers, as well as some extra sweets like uh, Mike and Ike's and gluten-free Oreos. And I'm so glad I did, because unbeknownst to me, even with immense planning, things can still fall through the cracks in a large congregation. There were two nights where boys had their birthdays during the camp, so the mom sent up birthday cake and ice cream that he couldn't have. So I was so glad that I had packed some sweet treats so my son didn't feel like he couldn't get dessert as well. When they were having their dessert, he went and got his safe thing and he felt satiated and enjoyed his sweet treat just like they did, but just different things. So while it took effort, communication, and planning and pushing through that uncomfortableness of me not being in control, it was so worth it. I'm really proud of all of us. We can do hard things as a family and you guys can do hard things. We are tough, this allergy crowd, I'm telling you. I hope if your allergy child gets to the age where they have the option to go to a sleep boy camp, that you'll be able to find, heck, even forge workarounds to make it possible. If there's one thing we are creative. We're creative in our recipe creation and the way we go about life. Be sure to see all the other topics that we've covered in Allergic Living's YouTube and IGTV channels. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you next month.